Hello, everybody. How are you doing? How are you doing? This is S. Anthony Thomas. This is the S. Anthony Says podcast number 488. And this one is going to be called Don't Test Old Street Dudes. And I'll tell you why. Be- <sighs> I have, I know not to do that because I, I grew up in slash near the hood. I know what the situation is. I knew some dudes who did some things. They weren't my friends, but I knew them. They were around the neighborhood. I knew them by first name. They kind of knew me by first name, not because I talked directly and became friends with them, but because obviously people would yell my name. You know, some of them actually came to a comedy club and saw me performing and they got, I got mad respect because they saw me doing my thing. Right. So we knew each other. And I knew some of those dudes and I knew what some of those dudes were capable of doing. But fortunately, because they knew me as the performer, the the, the entertainer guy and that kind of thing, they kind of left me alone. But I saw what they could do. I saw it. Ooh, or I heard about it. Oh, right. And the reason I'm saying this is because today I was I was going to the to a store. One of my relatives. I don't know how that. There's a there's a couple of my relatives. I don't know if they got a GPS tracking device on my car, but somehow they seem to know when I'm near a store and they call me and they, well, hey, what's going on? Ask what you doing. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, um, are you home right now? No, I'm in, I'm, I'm driving. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you at? Well, I'm at Flopty Flopty. Oh, is that by the supermarket? <sighs> yeah. All right, could you pick me up a floop de whoop a boop de boop a floop de bloop and a bloop de bloop? And I'll give you the money when you get here? Yeah, okay. And here's the thing. I don't know if they're calling the other relatives. You know, S. Anthony's at the supermarket right now. What? Well, maybe he can keep, pick me up some bloop de bloops, choop de choop, choop 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 de choop de choops. Hello? Yeah, what's going on? Hey, S. Anthony, where you at? And in the back of my mind, I'm going, you know, daggone well where I'm at because you called 35 seconds after the last phone call. You normally don't even call me on uh, during the, on the weekend on those Sundays. So, OK, I might as well just tell him where I am because he knows where I'm at the supermarket. Right now. Oh, you're at the supermarket. Oh, well, since you're there, give me a goop. And I'm like, oh, and I'm telling you right now, that's one of those times when you want to put your, your phone on airplane mode. So you don't wind up shopping for half your family with their lazy behinds. So actually, he actually caught me in the parking lot walking into the supermarket, to be honest with you. So when I'm walking in outside of the supermarket, sometimes there's nobody out there. Maybe they have some hacks out there. And, and I don't know what in this people listen to this podcast in different countries and different regions of the country also. So here on the northeast corridor of the United States, when they say hack, they use, that just means a person who sits in the parking lot waits for someone to come out with bags that is going towards the subway and they will give them a ride home for a nominal fee. I'll give you a ride home for $5. Where you live? I live at Johnson Street. Oh, that's only 10 blocks. I'll give you a ride for $5, right? And you're sitting there going, well, it costs roughly that amount to get on the train. I'll just get in a stranger's car and, uh, (laughs) and, and get, take a ride home. And for the most part, nothing happens, right? And, And after a while, when you see the same hacks at the store, you build up a relationship with them. And, all, and you trust them because you've had 55 rides with them and they look at you and they see five dollars or whatever the, the amount of money they charge. So they say, OK, they see you come and they go, that's five dollars. OK, and then they come back and they see another oh, and you become regulars. But here's the thing. There's also people outside that are younger guys, teenagers, sometimes even older, maybe 20 year olds or something that help people take their stuff to the car. And a lot of times, just like with the hacks. They have regulars, people that go because I had a guy when I my, my, I hurt my back last time. There was a guy that would always take my stuff to. the. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get this guy three dollars to take care of stuff to the car. My back's killing me. And it got to the point where he got so used to taking the stuff to the car that when my back healed up and I was OK, I was like, you know what? I What the heck? He relies on this bread. I'm not going to just shut him down. So I let him take my stuff to the car, take my stuff to the car, take my stuff to the car. No problem. No big deal. So like I said, people have regulars. They count on that money. When they see you coming, they go, that's three, that's five. They can literally see you coming into the store knowing that there's five people that they normally take stuff to the car. They're going to be coming out at different times. It doesn't take that much time to get stuff from the supermarket to the, to, to the across the parking lot. So they go, okay, that's $20 right there. But what happens when somebody new comes along? What happens if you're occupied with one regular and another regular comes out? Another enterprising person is going to go, well, let me take this stuff to the car. 
And that's where the conflict comes in. And that's what happened today. Now, as it turns out, I don't need anybody to take stuff to my car anymore. And the guy that used to do it is long gone. But this was a whole different situation. And I'm seeing people kind of circle around a couple of dudes like it was a boxing match. I was like, what is this? It's like it was like the Mayweather Pacquiao fight. They were sitting there. And who was it? Two dudes. It was a security guard and one of the guys that takes bags to people's cars. Why was he? Why was that happening? Because there was two dudes con in the conflict. They both kind of took this guy's stuff to the car. One was his regular, one was a semi-regular, but they were both there at the same time. And there was not that many people in the supermarket at the time, except for the people outside watching the fight that was about to happen. And they were about to get this throwing down. They were about to try to whoop each other's behind. They were about to get it in. But of course, the security guard can't let that happen. He comes outside. He's got the security guard uniform on. He, hey, guys, break it up, break it up. I can't have you fight out here. It's not good for business. Come on now. The guy, one of the guys says, man, bleep this. And he walks away. But the young guy, the younger of the two guys didn't like it because the guy that tried to stop him, act, put his hands on both of their chests to separate them. And the other guy that walked away was like, you know what? I ain't got time for this. And he decided to leave. But the young guy didn't like it. Man, get your hands off me, man. You don't touch me, man. You ain't my father, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'll bust your blah, blah, blah. He said some stuff I don't want to say. I'll kick your fist up. I'll put my foot in your bop the bop the And the security guard is very, very calm. He's not phased at all. And this guy, this young guy is getting all close to him, balling up his fist, moving all around, huffing and puffing. <sighs> I'll kick you out, man. You don't know who you're talking to. You don't know who you're talking to, man. You don't know who you're talking to. Oh, you don't know who this is. You don't know who I am, man. You don't know who I am. And the security guard is just looking at him, unfazed, unconcerned, not even flinching. And I'm standing there as I'm trying to walk around him, and I'm looking at the young guy, and I'm going, yeah, 20-year-old. That 29-year-old you're huffing and puffing in front of hasn't flinched once. You made a lot of feints to him like you were going to do something. He didn't flinch once. You have no idea. I, I'm already looking at the security guard, and I'm realizing that is a straight-up street dude. I guarantee you he's been to jail a couple of times. I guarantee you he's been in some serious fights, and I'm guaranteeing you he, he knows how fast his reflexes are. He's already looked at the young guy, assessed him as not a threat, already has his physical timing down, and realizes if this kid swings at me, it's over for him. And then he back, he just kind of goes, kid, just calm down. I just can't have you fight on you, okay? Man, yep, yep, you, man. I'll kick you off. I'll stomp if you get. I'll take my, I'll bust your feet. You fuck me, but you get your hookah, the hookah, he, he, And the security guard goes, all right, I got to go. I don't have time for this. And he calmly walks in. Very professional. Door closes behind him. I'm on the other side of the door. I walk in, and I see the security guard talking to one of his friends who was just about to come out to back him up, and he was laughing. Your friend was about to get into a fight and he's laughing. Why? I'm, I'm walking behind him. I'm hearing that conversation. And the friend of the security guard goes, that kid has no idea what you was about to do to his punk ass, does he? And he goes, no, nah. I, I, I wasn't going to touch him. If he swung at me, I was going. And then he started talking about, man, look, man, I had a dude like that. I knocked out dudes way bigger than that when I was inside, man. You know what I'm saying? This dude don't even understand, man. I was a boxer. I was a this, that, man. I got a. You know what I'm saying? I got the, you know what I'm saying? I, my brother knows jujitsu. So this guy's got some training and he was a street dude. Yeah, young guy doesn't realize how close he came to being destroyed. And I assessed him correctly. I could smell it. I could, I could tell this was a street dude because I was around street dudes my whole life when I was younger. Like I said, I wasn't one of them. I didn't roll with them. I committed no crimes. I've never done anything like that. But when you live in slash near the hood, you know these dudes and you know what they look like. Even when they're reformed, even when that part of their life is over with, you can see that it was there. Like if you see a guy in really good shape, all muscled up, you don't actually have to see him in the gym working out to know that he goes to the gym, do you? 
Right? If you see a guy who has great cardio when he's, he's thin and he's real thin, toned muscles, you don't have to know he runs or ran in, in college and high school, do you? No, you can tell, especially if you know guys who run, ran, and you know guys who are bodybuilders. You know what they look like. And if you grew up around street dudes, you know a street dude when you see one. When I lived in Los Angeles, there were some dudes that were reformed gang members, right? And they never really talked about what they did. They never said what they did. They didn't have to. And I wasn't going to ask. You know what I'm saying? I remember one guy, he had, he had teardrop tattoos removed off of his face. He sat at the desk next to me and I looked over at him and I could, he kind of tried to put a little makeup on him. And I pointed to his face and I pointed to my cheek. And he goes, what, man? What's guy? I said, dude. And he goes, oh, shoot. And he goes into his pocket and he rubs a little more makeup on it. He was covering up his tattoos. I don't remember the dude's name because this was like 30 years ago. But the thing is, ooh. Right? He had the eyes, the same kind of eyes that you would have, that you would have if you were chasing gazelle in the damn jungle. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> He had the kind of eyes that let you know he has stomped a couple people. He's he knows what he knows what a broken bone sounds like when you're breaking somebody's bones. Some of the stuff he talked about, he never talked about any kind of secret stuff. He just talked about the kind of stuff that everybody already knew about him that knew him. And I remember somebody in the break room one time. You know, you always have that alpha male type wannabe guy tries to bump, tries to tries to be Mister Tough. And he tried that crap with this dude. And once again, I, but this time I knew the dude was a former street dude. And the guy was about to get into a fight with him. And just like with the supermarket, this guy's all huffing and puffing up in the guy's face. And the guy, this former street dude in the business suit was just kind of looking at him. You ever seen Mike Tyson in the ring when he was boxing that, 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 that Irish guy? Peter McNeely and he, I'm McNeely and I'm going to knock out Tyson and Mike Tyson just kind of looking at him. He already, Mike Tyson in his mind already knew what was going to happen to this guy. He was not concerned at all. When the guy bum rushed him, not Mike Tyson just kind of ducked the punches and dropped him and put him away quickly. That's the kind of look this guy had when the guy from the office was huffing and puffing in his face. He was like almost as if to say, I don't want to do this. But I'm annoyed with you right now. And I'm just looking for a reason. I'm just waiting for you to raise your hands to me. Because the moment you raise your hands to me, I might even let you hit me. Because I know you can't hit hard enough to knock me out. I'm going to let you do that. So when I do to you what I've done to many others, others who are actually like me, which would make it even more difficult for me to physically to destroy them. When I do that to you, who is not made of the same stuff I'm made out of, you're going to regret everything you said, everything you did. You might actually regret the fact that you moved to California from wherever you came from, because it will be a long time before you realize the way your body works differently after what I do to you. That was a look at his face. And the guy who was huffing and puffing in his face, I think he's kind of, even though he wasn't a street smart, I think there was something inside of him. I think there was a cold chill that went down his spine when he realized, whoa, I'm a gazelle and I just said bleep you to a to a damn cheetah. I just said bleep you to a lion. I just said bleep you to a tiger. I think it might be better for me to back up. He froze in front of him. And the dude who the former street dude was just kind of sitting there looking at him. Eyes getting a little bit, eyes, ties tightening down. Getting ready for what, whatever, whatever may happen. And the other dude realized, ooh, this is not going to go good. Because everybody's looking at me and shaking their head. If this guy tunes me up and stomps me out, He's not going to get arrested. I'm going to get arrested and my behind whooped. And I might lose my job and some teeth. And he goes, you know what, man? Never mind, man. Trying to save face. And he walks out the room, slams down his coffee cup. 
He figured it out. You do not want to test former street dudes. It takes a long time for the street dude to be buried, 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 buried inside. It takes a long time. As an older guy, I'm a middle-aged cat now. I know former street dudes who are so far away from that life. It's been literally a quarter century since, since they behaved in that way. That part of them is buried so deep. It's almost as if it doesn't exist, but of course it still does. But it takes a lot to get it out of them. You can bump into them. You can do all this kind of stuff, calling names, huff and puff at a bar. They're not going to risk it. Now, granted, if you attack their wife or their kids, They'll twist your head off. They'll twist your head till it pops off. But it will take something like that. People need to realize, assess who you're talking to, man. You never know who you're talking to. Sometimes what you're looking at, you're looking at a sheep and you think it's a sheep and it's really a lion wearing a sheep outfit. I remember there was something that happened a long time ago. There's a, there's a, a MMA fighter named Donald Cowboy Cerrone. And he was hanging out with his wife somewhere. I think they were shopping or something like that. Don't hold me to the, to the complete accuracy of the story. He is one of the most decorated UFC fighters of all time. A Hall of Famer. One of the most beloved UFC fighters of all time. The kind of dude that was dangerous all the time. He was that good. Some regular guy gets into, a, into an argument with him. And tries to fight. Donald Cowboy Cerrone. I think he might have actually hit Donald Cowboy Cerrone. And his wife goes, don't do it. And he laughs and he goes about his business. And the guy's like, yeah, that's right. You better go on. You better leave. The guy doesn't realize how close he came to being in a coma. <laughs> because if Cowboy Cerrone decided to fight him for real, if he had lost control, if he really wanted to, he could have beaten that guy to death in inside of 15 to 20 seconds he would have been able to whoop this guy or beat him to death holding his wife's purse because he realized i don't need all both my arms i'll just kick him in his face and stomp him he would have killed that guy if he wanted to the same thing happened to michael bisping another all-time great he was a middleweight champion in the ufc he was out with his family some guy was giving him a hard time and i think the guy hit him and he laughed if i remember correctly the guy punched him and he laughed at him Imagine you're mad and you're getting into a scuffle with a guy. You hit him as hard as he can and he laughs at you. If you punch a guy with everything you got and he laughs at you, you know what you need to do? Apologize profusely and give him at least 50% of the money in your currently in your wallet. And if you don't have any money in your wallet, walk him to an ATM and say, look, my daily limit's 300. If that is that enough? If not, I'll cash up you later because once again, Michael Bisping was a middleweight. I think it was a middleweight champion. He could have beaten that and he's retired and he could have beaten that guy until he woke up and was saying hi to his ancestors. These are retired fighters. They're, they're out of the game, but there's still got enough left to take care of a regular person. And it's the same thing with street dudes. They've been in fist fights, knife fights, been shot, stabbed, hit with pipes. Pain is something that nobody wants. But if you've been hit in the head with a pipe and stomped and stabbed and all that kind of stuff and shot, you're not afraid of a fist fight, especially when you're looking at the guy and you can tell this guy has not lived the type of life that you have lived. Never test an old street dude, ever. That's the lesson of the day, my friends. If you are ever in a bar and you're about to fight a guy and you're huffing and puffing and he's just very calmly looking at you, do you know what that means? It means you need to apologize and hand him 50% of the money that's in your wallet. And if that's not enough, walk up to an ATM, tell him that the daily limit is $300. And if that's not enough, you'll cash app him later. <laughs> To conclude the story, the young guy, I think, just walked away and went about his business. Just like the guy that attacked Donald Cowboy Cerrone, just like the guy that attacked Michael Bisping, 
This guy has no idea how close he came to, like I said, either waking up in a hospital or waking up and finding out what Jesus looks like in the morning. You understand what I'm saying? So, in conclusion, never trust old street dudes or retired street dudes. You just have no idea (laughs) what the heck could happen. You dig? Now, obviously, many of you will never be in a situation for that to happen. But, you know, if you don't have to fight somebody, if it's not imperative, if they're not about to punch your wife in the face or punch your kid in the face or punch you in the face, if it's not something like that, if it's just words or somebody knocked your beer over, somebody stepped on your foot, somebody bumped into you, somebody said something rude, just keep walking. It's just not worth it it just isn't okay and i'm not saying that i'm saying that because i care about you and also because i don't want anybody in my audience getting murdered (laughs) or anybody else just don't do it okay cool this episode is over do me a favor my friends if you love this podcast and you do do me a favor and subscribe to this podcast tell a friend about this podcast share spread the word about this podcast if you love this podcast and you do make sure you come back every week i'm gonna be here so i want you to be here okay all right thank you for listening much love to you i am s anthony thomas you are the most awesome audience in the world i will talk to you later see you